Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome back to some new Entropia content. Man, I think I have some good news today. Nothing really that good in the Entropia game, but at least my health has started to improve slightly. I don't know, the past few days I was kind of like on a downhill trajectory. I was kind of worried that maybe I had the virus, but no, I was thinking so far so good. It's mainly recovered, and I think I traced back what I was having issues with. Whatever heat stroke or virus I have right now, the fucking vaporizer is not agreeing with it. It's totally fucking up my lungs. So I can't use it at all, not even one little puff, or else I'll fucking have severe breathing problems when I'm trying to sleep. Yeah, I'm just gonna respond here to this guy. Yeah, he's a good guy. I see him sweating here pretty often. No, I'm still trying to collect some more sweat so that I can do a bonding run. I really don't want to buy sweat because it's just going to kill into my profits for the bonding run. And I like sweating, so I might as well collect some. Yeah, I figured I'll make sure to talk some more Entropia stuff while I do this, not get too off on tangents. No, yeah, the only thing was is yeah, my health was actually taking some pretty drastic declines. I was actually worried that I was going to have to go to the hospital soon, but... Yeah, as soon as I cut the vaporizer out completely, my lungs have really started to clear up and I'm not having the issues breathing as much at night. So yeah, it was pretty freaky. Like, I don't know if anyone's heard that story, but how it feels like you're breathing through a straw. It's like I definitely had that sensation. Yeah, and it is very scary. So I encourage everyone to take this shit serious. I don't know if I had heat stroke or a virus or what it was, but yeah, at least I'm breathing properly again last night cut out all the vaporizer I don't know I'm really dying to use the vaporizer again there's lots of really good weed sales coming up but I'm thinking dear god I really have to have my priorities straight breathing is kind of essential <laughs> kind of <laughs> yeah so I don't know I figure if I'm really Jones in that bad I can start baking with some cannabis I actually have a bunch of weed that I put in the freezer because last grow up I didn't manage to finish everything before it was gonna go bad so I had to freeze some of it. Yeah, so maybe I'll make some pot brownies or something to help cheer me up. <laughs> now, I'm not really into baking much, so I don't know how that's going to work. We'll see. <laughs> now, I hope everyone else is doing well and hope everything's going good in Entropia. I had a bunch of new people that asked to join the Annoying Entropia page again, so I approved some more of that. Yeah, thanks guys. I don't know if anyone's posting comments in that group very often. I post all my videos and almost never get any likes or responses from it. So, I don't know guys. If you're watching my video, if you can help out with likes, it, it goes a long way. Because it's really frustrating in a way when I do a show and no one gives likes. Because then I'm like, shit, am I just talking to myself or what? <laughs> and I know that I'm not because when I log into the game, I keep running into a whole bunch of people saying, Hey, we love your YouTube streams. Make sure you keep it up. And I'm like... So, I don't know, I guess maybe I'll just have to focus on that instead of trying to get the likes on Facebook and shit. <laughs> it's just not happening. <laughs> now, and the other thing I've been doing lately is I just did the Bitcoin lottery thing again. I've been hoping to get some sweat tokens from it so that I could buy sweat or sell sweat to Entropia Partners for 1.5 a K. Although, here, I'm actually going to be using my sweat. But, no luck with that. It's like I did a lot of this, the lottery things and still no sweat tokens. But in the morning message, it does say it takes a while for the sweat tokens to carry over. So maybe that's what it is. I just got to wait for a while. I tried doing the, the betting with the high low with the, the Bitcoin lottery. And I won the first two bets. I was like, oh, this is sick. This is pretty cool. But then when I tried playing the bets again, I think I had like 10 losses in a row. So I'm like, holy shit, like this is just one of those loss machines. So I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be betting any of my Bitcoins anymore, or at least until the, the algorithm improves so that they're not just taking all your Bitcoins. I don't know, who knows, maybe some other people are having really good luck with the lottery bet system. Can't say that I am. Yeah, what else was new? Yeah, health-wise, my whole digestive tract has been really messed up. And 
I'm thinking it had to do with the, the massive weight gains and losses. So for the next couple days, I'm actually just going on a pure liquid diet to see if I can help heal anything. And sorry everybody, I'm back. That was just my roommates going through the basement again. Now that's one great thing I'm thinking once I get my pool house set up and then I can start streaming from it, it's like I won't have to worry about all the interruptions anymore. Because man, is it ever annoying. It's like I'm trying to do a stream and at least like 10 or 15 times per hour someone from my roommates will go by and be like starting to talk and I'm like God, can you guys just give me one hour a day where I can record? But no, it's too much to ask for them. So, yeah, not to be complaining at my roommates all the time. It is their house too, so I can't just be bitching like it's I'm the king of everything. <laughs> Alright, yeah, I was messaging some stuff to XSplit support, trying to get the whole scene situation fixed. And yeah, they released a new scene update already, and it did speed it up a little. So I'm hoping, uh, yeah... XSplit will continue to improve on that end. Now I was thinking guys too, um, I don't know, I was trying to decide how often I can keep doing streams. I know with the way my health is declining, I think I've been sitting at my computer desk way too much, so I'm going to have to try to be outside doing stuff more often. Getting fresh air and moving around instead of sitting around all day. So yeah, I'm hoping that I can keep up the daily streams going. Um, to be honest, I'm probably going to have to cut back on the Clone Evolution streams. Just because I love Entropia way more than Clone Evolution. And despite my Clone Evolution viewers being the only people that have signed up as patrons. I'm not really doing this about the money. So yeah, I feel bad for the Clone Evolution players. But I'll, I'll try to keep doing a video for them maybe once a week. I don't know how it's going to go. I'll probably lose all my patrons. But hey, you got to put health first, right? Now if anyone else is Entropia player and they want to help out with the patron thing, it would be a big help because... Like right now, ever since, I don't want to be whining and bitching, but ever since my concussion injury, I've just been living off my life savings. The The government insurance just totally screwed me over. They didn't even pay to get my injury, like bills and medical bills covered. Meanwhile, they're raking in billions of dollars. They have uh, some of the richest employees on the WSAB or what is it, Union Sunshine List. We have a list in Canada that's called the Sunshine List and exposes how many people are part of a union that are making what is it like million dollar figures off the taxpayers every year and they almost do no work so we got like lists and lists of thousands of employees that are doing this and the government insurance agencies they're loading the list a lot of these people that are taking advantage of injured workers are just raking it in so that's the one thing i don't like about unions a lot of times unions look out for themselves and they step on everyone else so if you have unions in charge of government stuff they're going to be taking the taxpayer money, going on spending sprees, and just shitting on everyone else who's not part of the union. So yeah, that's the one thing I disagree with having unions involved with public sector money, or public taxpayer money, I mean. Like hell, if a union wants to go into the real world, start a company on their own, not paid with tax dollars, and start giving crap away like crazy because they're a part of the union, go right ahead because it's not my money you're paying it with. I know it's not a popular opinion because so many people are part of the unions these days. It's almost like I think well over 50%. So over half the people are involved in the corruption. So we're really never going to get it solved. <laughs> and it was the weirdest thing. Have you ever looked into the history of the 1920s? Not only did they overcome the whole pandemic thing, but one of the things they did to get the country to rebound after the economic hardship of the Spanish flu Guess what they did? They abolished all the unions that were spending tax dollar money. So I'm really thinking that's the only way we can go to solve or fix our economy. But I don't know if it's possible it's because there's more people that are in the unions that are not. So if it comes down to a vote, we're going to lose every time. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like, I don't know, this one guy I know won't mention any names, but he had this amazing career as like a sushi chef. They paid like really well, but then he got into the ideals where it's like he was worried that his profession was damaging the environment or that radiation was in the fish or something. So he completely abandoned his career and now was put his family into a life of poverty. So I was like, really, if you have a whole bunch of young kids and like really, what, what are you going to do? Stand by your morals or actually pay to get your family fed? 
So I don't blame the unions for doing that. Like, even if the unions are causing a lot of damage, you got to do what you got to do to, to feed your family, right? So I don't know. Yeah, teach their own if you if you can stand by your ideals enough to make your whole family go poor and starve. I guess all the power to you. <laughs> now, what else was there in television or not in television? In Tropia news wise. I think there was a few people that posted comments. Oh yeah, that was one of the questions that I was asking in my last video. Is what's going on with the blueprints? Is welding wire the new shrapnel? Like they're not giving any other blueprints anymore. It's just welding wire blueprints over and over again. So yeah, so a few people are saying that. They, they've noticed the same thing. That welding wire is like the new hottest print. And it's almost impossible to loot any other prints. So that's why I'm hoping, guys, if uh, you can help me with my auction sales or even buying some stuff from my shops and help me reach the 1,000 ped mark, then I plan to show you guys a new crafting trick I don't think anyone else has done a video about. And I'll show you how to loot good blueprints from vehicles. <coughs> how to fish for vehicle prints cheap, basically. Wait, am I still being hit? No, and technically I have shared this trick with a few of my favorite players, like ones that have helped me out with a lot of information. I shared it with Beamer before he died, and he tried it a bunch of times and it didn't work for him. But I know what happened was, is Beamer kept telling me he was doing really small crafting runs with the trick, like a 50 ped run or a 100 ped run, and I failed doing it too. The only way I've ever gotten this trick to work is by doing a 1000 ped crafting run, or at least 500. I think I started at 500 and worked my way all the way up to 1,000 doing it. I don't know, some of the returns, I'll, I'll, I'll probably open the Google spreadsheets to show you guys like how some of the previous crafting runs went, just in case I do another one to show you and it bombs. So there was occasions where it actually did work. And what I did is I just listed how much I spent in materials and shipping costs to get everything to a planet then calculated how much my loot return was and then listed all the blueprints that came in the loot and then took the blueprints markup and added that up as well in some cases it was ridiculous I was even doubling my profit like investing a thousand and making a thousand like my thousand back plus another thousand so I don't know how many times people have been crafting and doubled their money but so yeah guys if you really want to find out this trick I recommend helping me reach the thousand ped and yeah, another thing too, don't worry that even if no one helps me reach the thousand ped, slowly but surely I will get there because I'm building up the Entropia Partners cash. And I think I've got that almost up to 200 ped now. Let me check. Pretty sure it was 188 or something like that. Yeah, so that's my plan. Don't worry, even if I go broke, I'm going to build this up to a thousand ped and put it back into Entropia from Entropia Partners. I'll make a new deposit video or withdrawal video. I don't know what, are, what what would you call it when you take money from Entropia Partners and you put it into Entropia. Is that a withdraw or a deposit? <laughs> I think some people call it both. <laughs> yeah, so the only morning I see on Entropia Partners right now, they're saying there is a delay in getting paid right now. But to be honest, some of the delays they've told me about before, I was upset about. I was like, oh man, fucking delays. But then eventually they did pay out. So even if it is a little bit slow, I'm patient. Alright, sorry. Just the roommates again. Okay, so what teleporter was I going to go to? Hmm. Skylabs teleporter. That sounds kind of cool. Let's try that one. Fuck. Skylabs, that's not where I wanted to go. Did it say Skylabs landing area? Anyways. No, I thought that I was like congratulating Cyrene for making their teleporter list make sense by saying, hey, landing area, Skylabs. But I'm pretty sure when I just did that, it said Skylabs and didn't say landing area. So I don't know what happened. All right, let's try something new. 
the ice plateau. Since I'm fucking boiling hot, maybe it'd be nice to go to the ice plateau. No, sorry guys, it is still fucking hotter than a witch's tit here. I know people are saying witch's tits are cold, but I swear, all the witch's tits I know are super hot. <laughs> Uh, let's check out the storage, see how much sweat I got. Yeah, I'm really low on sweat. Fuck, I don't have anywhere near how much I need for a crafting run. Alright, sorry guys. Here I was bragging that I was going to go do some crafting and I don't even have any sweat. Yeah, so if anyone has sweat they'd like to donate, you can donate it to my show. I can use it for crafting. You can see I'm not really into the sweat reselling yet. I'm going to try to get back into that. Yeah, see, if I was designing Cyrene, I would put Rookie Training Area, bracket Sweat Spot, or something like that. Just for people that have really bad short-term memory from either concussions or drug use or whatever the hell else they did to themselves. Or even genetics, sometimes you don't even do anything. Yeah, it would go a long way, because I don't know how many times I've been stuck on some planet trying to figure out how to get to a certain teleporter, and I just give up. Or what will happen was, is I'll log into Google to try to find the answer. But when I find the answer, I get distracted by other things on Google. And then, yeah, those damn boobs again. <laughs> yeah, and then I totally forget to log back into Entropia. So if you're designing Entropia to have to go outside of the game to find stuff, you're basically telling people to leave the game and go do something else. I thought I saw some stones or fruit on the ground, but nothing. Yeah, so what was it? Yeah, that was the, the comments I was reading in the Facebook group. People saying that they're getting crap loads of welding wire prints too. Now I'm kind of very excited to release my crafting secret about vehicles. I know other players know it in the game because I go into the auction and I see what they're selling and then I see the same loot that I got from doing the trick so I'm like hey there's definitely other people that are doing it and I bet you those people are like oh god please don't tell everyone the trick because they're using it to make thousands of head every day. So if anyone's a crafter or frustrated in the game don't give up that there's no way to make profit doing it. There's actually ways people find it and they often don't tell anyone. That's the Entropian thing that I don't like about Entropia, is it is one of kind of those exclusive clubs where it's like you find out a secret and you try not to tell anyone. Like I've never really been a big fan of that. Like from the whole ancient mystery research I do, that's what Freemasons often do. And I know the whole reason Freemasons do it is because a lot of the stuff that they have, like their ancient mystery secrets are very offensive like politically. So they can't even tell people if they wanted to because they would be called far right extremists. <laughs> Now, if you haven't realized already, it's like ancient mystery research. We often look for the clues to solving ancient mysteries in every culture, except for one, because that one culture is forbidden to talk about. And I, I pr probably you know which one I'm talking about, <laughs> even by not mentioning it by name. <laughs> no, so that's what they do. They always go around to all these ancient mystery sites and they're like, oh, I wonder who built it. How did they do it? I'll check every culture for answers except one. It's like, hey, maybe you're not checking the one that actually has the answers. <laughs> no, it's, it has to do with like the whole church battle, how the church used to battle about whose version of the Bible is correct. Like the, the Romans would argue the saying theirs is the best. And then the Irish church, they'd be like, no, the Roman version is complete bullshit. It's like what our version of the Bible is true is actually matching what DNA studies show and stuff. So it's kind of funny that the Romanized version of religion seems the most popular, yet when it comes to scientific evidence, the Irish version is actually way more accurate. So I don't know, maybe one day we'll see a revision where everyone's like, hey, fuck this Romanized version of religion, let's go back to the Irish version. <laughs> and I was always wondering why Roman churches weren't popular in Ireland, and I was like, oh, that's why. <laughs> They stole their history and fucking changed it all with revisionism. 
So that's why it's kind of funny how history repeats. Don't you notice that a lot of history is being like revised and changed? <laughs> it's like you really shouldn't be doing that if you want to have a congruent actual picture of what happened in the past or else you end up with all these mysteries. <laughs> Alright, so enough with the ancient mystery talk. What the hell is going on with Entropia? Um, yeah, latest things in Entropia. Hmm. Yeah, I think what I'll do after I finish here crafting on Cyrene is I'm going to fly back to Next Island. Or maybe I'll check. Yeah, let's do that. What I'll do is I'll open up my Entropia account thing. And just make a list of where all I have all this ped. So that way I can see like which places I need to go to to pick up what loot to help raise up my thousand ped. <sighs> nah, sorry guys, I just need to use the vapor inhaler. Now I switched the one vaporizer for another, really. <laughs> Except this uh, Vicks Vapor Inhaler seems way better for my lungs than, than putting cannabis tar in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one thing I really worried about the experiments when I was doing with my vaporizer and what happens to cannabis when you vaporize it. I don't know if anyone's noticed this. Let me check my items. Yeah, so it turns out when you start refining cannabis into like oils or uh, vapor oil, guess what one of the properties it has is? It's fucking sticky and not just like a little bit sticky, like I'm talking roofing tar sticky. Like you really can't get it off your hands with water, alcohol, washing, anything except for one thing can remove it, fucking gasoline. So that's what I was thinking like. Really? Can you imagine we're taking that substance and just pouring it into our lungs? It's like, how the hell is our lungs dissolving it? I'm pretty sure we don't have gasoline in our lungs. <laughs> or maybe we have something similar to that, and that's how it's able to dissolve it. Now, it was a pretty scary experience. Like, I could feel the when I got whatever this sickness or heat stroke or whatever it is, I could feel the vapor sticking to my lungs, and not in a good way. Now that's what I realized that when they say that cannabis could actually be made into uh, what is it plastics that's when I realized that's why it's because it's so sticky that's how oil becomes made into plastics because roofing tar and all that shit is from oil and it's extremely sticky right so I'll just show everyone a quick little view about some of the things that I'm, I'm trying to sell to reach the thousand ped to share my crafting secrets with everyone so I'll just bring them up on the screen quick. I'm sure you guys won't mind if you miss a little bit of the sweating action. <laughs> right, you can see I've collected quite a good collection of PRX the blueprints, those fancy cars. You can see I have over a thousand clicks for most of them. Oh yeah, for all of them. So I don't know how much markup. I usually was selling these for, what is it? I think at one point I was selling them for 30,000% markup. So it was crazy high. But PRX prints have kind of came down in value. So maybe I'll give my viewers a deal. If anyone wants to buy some PRX prints, just name whatever price you can. And if you can buy all of them, I'll fucking hook you up with the sweet deal. Hopefully way under markup. Unless the markup is at like 100 or 200%. Well, obviously I can't beat that. But so maybe the lowest I could go is maybe, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. And anyone can message to negotiate. I think, yeah, 9,000 ped I was selling them for, for markup. Then it dropped down to 5,000. Then it was dropping down to around four or 2,000. And then at that point, I was like, shit, I might as well just save them and try to sell them somewhere else other than the auction. So, yeah, so I probably won't go any lower than 2,000%. But, if, man, if you guys can help out with that, you'll get a whole shitload of fucking PRX prints. I'm pretty sure, like, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think too many people have this many PRX prints other than me. Or the other people doing the trick. <laughs> now, and if any of the people that have been buying thruster prints off me have been wondering how I've been getting them, it's by doing this trick. 
Now, I fucking collected ridiculous amounts of thruster prints. Like, I had enough thruster prints to make enough thrusters for all of Entropia for like 10 years. So when I sold them, I don't know what happened to the crafters, if they actually crafted them or they just trade turboiled all of them. Alright, so what I got for metal residue, I believe that's on my Rocktropia shop. So if anyone wants to swing by and buy some metal residue, that'll help me reach the thousand ped pretty good. Those Rocktropia, or those uh, PRX prints, that would help me out large. Uh, what else do I got for sale? I still haven't sold a, man a Mankini yet. Big shout out to Mindark, thanks for fucking us over with the Mankinis. <laughs> Now and you can see that I have, holy shit, does it say I have three Mankini prints? Oh yeah, I went on a buying spree of Mankini prints on the auction. Yeah, so if anyone needs a Mankini print, I know I've got them for sale high in my shops, but just give me whatever offer you can offer it, and I bet you I'll, I'll reduce the price dramatically to help you out because you're helping me. Right, so yeah, you can see the next island, I've got a big stack of Listerium. Can't remember why that was. Was I cla cra oh yeah, it's because I was crafting the the clothing prints. So either yeah, I'll probably just tank the or sell the Listerium on Next Island. I really should have put it for sale before I left. I don't know why I didn't. Maybe I was planning on coming back and trying to loot more clothing prints, but the way I got screwed over so bad with the Mankini that has like really alienated me from crafting on fucking Next Island. Like that pretty much set my whole ped value down to what it was half and now I'm gone for months trying to fucking recoup the losses just from that, that those goddamn fucking rules of restrictions they employed. Now I don't hold it against Bonnie for sending me, well, mentioning the Mankini and inspiring me to go and get it because it was a great plan right up until fucking Minder screwed us. That's the one thing I can't stand when people start censoring stuff. Especially when people censor boobs. Let them free. <laughs> it's like, really? Come on, guys. Why the hell are we censoring shit? Are we fucking babies or what? <laughs> Our babies want to see boobs. Come on. <laughs> Alright, so, yeah, that's what I got to do. Is I got to sell this goddamn Zorn ingot because another fuck over by Mindark tried to craft the latest new blueprint couldn't because the blueprint they're selling is fucking broken oh god that pisses me off <laughs> right and what else do I got the listerium metal residue and the super adhesive I don't know what else I could sell that has high value and ped not really too much it's just my blueprints that have the biggest markups now I do got some speed bike prints if anyone's into those. I think the parts to make the speed bikes are becoming more available. I do got some of the wet ski blueprints. Yeah, if anyone's into blueprints for vehicles, give me a shout. I don't have any quad prints, I know that's one people ask me for. I'm wondering it's because my trick that I'm using to get vehicle prints doesn't really get quad prints or maybe it's just quad prints are extremely rare and nobody's getting them except for extreme circumstances. Alright. Alright, let's do a quick message from my sponsor. Today's show was brought to you by Crack. Crack. It'll fuck you up. Alright, that was a little better. I think I noticed slightly less lag than when I usually switch scenes. I don't know, maybe it's because I made a custom stinger for the show, but the only thing I think that's not the problem, because when I made the custom stinger, it worked great for months. Never lagged at all. And now it's lagging. So I know that it can't be the stinger. Unless something changed. And so what else exciting stuff can I do for Entropia? I don't want to fucking sweat the whole episode. Hmm. Yeah, maybe I'll do a little bit of a crafting run for those Explosive Projectiles 1. See if I can loot a fucking Sirene print or if they're just going to keep giving me Calypso prints. 
And I really missed that. That was my ba my favorite feature in the game. Was when I realized it was actually my crafting mentor. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Mike King Beanut. He was the one who taught me this. He's like, yeah, you want to fish for different prints. And then I realized that different prints come from other planets. Like you can get more rare prints if you go to a planet that has rare prints. So that was a great strategy. Worked for years. I don't know why they've changed it. So now the planets are giving only Calypso prints. It's kind of real shitty change to make. The Outer Rim. I'll, I was going to make a comment about that, but <laughs> maybe I better not if I don't want my channel removed. <laughs> yeah, I noticed in the chat on my YouTube videos, some people have been asking me to make more television videos because they really loved the last one. I'll try to do that, guys, but it's actually bringing me down quite a bit because... I really wanted to the Intellivision Amico to succeed and the path that it's going down is such a disaster. It's kind of like looking at a train wreck involving your family or something. Holy shit, my pet is so low. I almost don't even have enough to do a fucking... Dear God. Man, I usually never let my pet value go lower than a thousand, but that whole fucking Mankini incident just fucked me over. Oh man. Uh, let's pretend that I'm going to do a 40 ped crafting run with nano cubes, but really I don't spend or plan on spending more than 10 ped. Let's equip the lucky tools for crafting. I'll turn globals on. Oh, they are on. Now, sorry guys if I seem a little bit out of it today. I don't know, it's probably too many details, but my digestive system is in such rough shape that I'm pretty sure I was going to have to go to the emergency room unless it stops bleeding. So, now I've actually had a history with uh, stomach tumors when I was a kid. I had a tumor removed with a high dosage of, uh, what is it, targeted chemotherapy. I didn't even know that. They can, back in the 80s, they were able to target chemotherapy doses. So that they didn't flood your whole body with it, they just targeted the place that needed it. I don't know if I was just very fortunate to get like a experimental treatment, but yeah, that's how they cured it the first time. And what happened was, is I had a tumor that grew in my intestine, so that it stopped all the food from being able to get through, and it caused like a knot. And then uh, after I wasn't able to get food through, I just started getting like horrible stomach pains because I could feel that it was knotted. And then. Uh, well, yeah, my dad brought me into the hospital or to my family doctor and he said, oh, just take Tums, you'll be fine. But then my dad's like, no, this is like way more serious than just taking Tums. So he brought me to the emergency room. They did the test and they found out that, yeah, my intestines were tied in a knot. I wasn't getting any food through. And to be honest, like the past few years, I felt that knot sensation coming back. And I've just tried to like tough through it. But really, I think now that I'm getting a lot of fucking blood coming through, I'm like, shit, I really shouldn't have toughed through that. Should have went and got it checked out again right away. So I'm hoping maybe if, if I try some fasting, get my fucking body enough time to heal so it's not bleeding so much, that I can avoid having to go to the hospital. But after a couple of days of fasting and I don't get any good results, then I'm going to have to go to the eMERGE. Oh boy. No, and the whole reason I've been so reluctant to go to the emergency room I don't know if anyone else is having this issue with Canadian healthcare, but you're pretty much on your own these days. Like, my uncle has gone in for multiple times requesting tests. The doctors can basically just say no. They're like, oh, you got some really serious problems? No, we're not going to do any testing. And they're like, this isn't America or, or the States where you can tell your doctor, do this test, give me the bill, but you have to do it. So, like in Canada, you have to ask nicely and they can just say no. So yeah, that's what's happening a lot of times with me and my family go to the hospital. We wait like 20 hours in the emergency room behind half of the people from Syria. And then you find out that, nope, they don't have time. They just say, nope, we're not going to test you. Like I even cracked my skull open to the point where I was almost dead. They wouldn't even give me a fucking x-ray. They're like, nope, sorry, sir, go home. 
It's like if you say anything bad to disagree with it, we'll call security and drag your ass out of the fucking hospital. So yeah, I'm not really very pleased with Canadian healthcare lately. Like I don't want to go sit in the emergency room, wait 20 hours to ask them to do a test for them just to say no and then have to go home. So yeah, so everyone who's giving me, probably going to give me a hard time in the chat saying, hey, you should go to the hospital right now. For what? I can't tell them to do tests. When I go there, unless I'm like actually dying, they probably won't do a test. So I don't know, like the whole socialist healthcare system, like anytime I hear people in the States advocating to get like a, a nationwide insurance plan, you want to fucking avoid that like the plague. Because next thing you know, you're paying 80% income tax, you go to the hospital and they're just like, no, sorry, sir, we don't have to help you. It's optional for us to say yes or no. And we'll say no every time because it's saving us time and money. Like really, like, I don't know. I don't want to get too much into the health issues because like I was almost thinking about canceling doing streams altogether yesterday because my health got so bad I was like shit I can't do it anymore but I'll, I'll try to keep it going as long as I can. Alright let's move to the first T and titty. Now I was thinking even if it is like a bad diagnosis and I'm not really going to make it it's like at least that would give me the encouragement to go on a bit of a spending spree instead of banking all my life savings trying to to live off of it. And it was funny too. I was talking to a, a, a bank person who gives out loans. I like a really sketchy place, like high interest rate loans. Forget it, it was something like 20 or 30%. So anyways, I went to see him and he's like, yeah, did you know, like, he was telling me some stories about what it's like approving these loans. He's like, normally most people that come in and ask for these like really high interest rate loans that are just going to screw themselves over are people that are dying. And he said, yeah, like people that are dying often want to get a loan because they want to go on a huge spending spree before they die. And he said, the weirdest part is, is like some of the, these patients had like the worst terminal conditions, like they had weeks or months to live. And as soon as they get the loan and go on some big spending spree and start enjoying their life, all of a sudden they make a fucking remote or miraculous recovery. So he was saying like, if he ever got a terminal diagnosis, first thing he would do is try to get a giant loan and go on a spending spree. <laughs> I don't know if it's like the universe just spiting those people. I'd be like, Hey, you thought you could die and get out of paying this loan. Now you have to live. <laughs> so I don't know like how many doctors tell you that too. Eh? They're like, Hey, did you know our patients? had more success with getting a huge loan than they did the medications. <laughs> I think it's, it comes down to the whole philosophy of what our universe is and why belief is such a powerful force. Like the observer effect, scientists are still trying to determine why the observer effect seems to affect things so much. Or even the placebo effect of medicine, like they still can't solve it. Like they'll take someone who's sick, give them a pill that cures it and a pill that's just sugar water. So they, they, they can try to test to see which pill is working the best. And for some reason, that sugar water pill works just as good as the medicine in a lot of cases. And it's the placebo effect where people take it and they're like, oh, this is the medicine. They eat it and they believe it's going to cure them. And it does. <laughs> so it's like you can never underestimate the power of belief. It's fucking way stronger than science can even explain. Yeah, so maybe that ties to like the, the belief factor, like people go on these spending sprees, they start cheering themselves up, they believe that everything's a lot better because they're all of a sudden living the life that they always wanted to. And then all of a sudden they start living longer. <laughs> kind of reminds me of that pet philosophy where if you have a really old dog that you want to live longer, what you do is you get him a puppy to play with because all of a sudden that puppy will start rejuvenating his will to live. <laughs> Then he starts to want to live longer to help look after that puppy, cheers him up, and what do you know, the old dog lives longer. Hey, so maybe that's what I should do. I should just start having kids now, and that'll drive my body to want, will to want to live longer. <laughs> Ladies, don't get any ideas. Now, I was thinking, at one point, my life had reached the, the prime conditions, and I was like, shit, the only thing I have to do to avoid this ever changing is make sure I never get into a relationship. <laughs> Because then I'm pretty sure it'll all go downhill from there. <laughs> Not to blame it on ladies or anything, but usually when I get into a relationship, I tend to want to spoil women, so I spend too much. 
I mean, if I go on a spending spree, I'm going to fuck over my finances and my whole life being on track will end up flip-flopping to being in the gutter again. <laughs> it's like you can't win and you can't lose, or, or you can't win them both. <laughs> right, so what other news was there from Entropia? I think I covered everything. Just that one guy was showing off that really cool Never Die CD. Right, he had the, the Entropia login CD and he had it signed by Never Die. And people are debating how much it's worth. And then somebody was like, it's worth $10. Another person's like, it's worth 100 I was like, guys, when it comes down to really rare items, the price is determined by the person who owns it. Like if, say you own a really rare house and there's no, no other houses like it. And someone tries to come up to you and say, oh, that house is worth $100. You'd be like, really? How are you determining this? I'm the person who has the house. I choose what I sell it for because there's no other copies. So really the price is all up to whoever's selling it. I find it so funny when people come up and try to tell the seller how much something is worth. And the only time they can really do that is say there's an established buying history of the exact same item. So if you had like an Entropia CD that was signed by Never Die and there's like thousands of them. Yeah, then you could start saying this is how much it should be worth because the last few have sold for this amount, sort of like a markup. But if there's only one copy of this Entropia CD and you're the only person that has it, really, it's up to you how much you sell it for. These buyers can't tell you what it's worth. <laughs> now, I always had that debate when I was selling my shops in uh, Monria. People are trying to tell me how much I was allowed to sell the Monria shops for. I'm like, guys, if I have the only shops, I'm going to set whatever price I want. I don't give a shit what you say it should be worth. <laughs> yeah, and what happened? I ended up selling it for the higher markup that I wanted. I didn't take their little ass offers. Now, that happened to me when I won Crafting Mania, too. People started messaging me, telling me how much the Crafting Mania reward blueprint is worth. I'm like, guys, there's only nine clicks that have ever sold in the entire auction. So really, it's a super rare item. It's like, if you can find one cheaper, go buy it. But don't come telling me how much I should sell it for. <laughs> now, I almost sold it for 2,000 ped. And then someone offered 7,000 ped. And I was like, holy shit, I should really look into how much this thing is worth. And then I found out that it is super rare. Not a lot of people won Crafting Mania. Or they just didn't sell the rewards. They used it themselves. So I still have the Crafting Mania reward. If anyone wants to make a sick offer for it, that would help me out a lot. Now I was thinking what I'll do for my long-term goals. If my Entropia channel actually becomes popular enough that I can start sustaining myself financially. Or not even just the Entropia portion, but the whole YouTube channel on its own. I'm going to start vlogging so I can get a lot more viewers and subscribers. Hopefully a whole bunch of more patrons. But anyways, if I boost that up to the point and I get my guest house finished, then I'm going to start in putting it out there in case anyone needs a bed and breakfast that's really cheap near Toronto. I can't say it's going to be really cheap. Maybe for Entropians, I'll even give it a certain amount of stays free per year. But like anyone who's from Entropia and wants to come and stay here, they, they can do it for free. I don't know. I shouldn't promise the free part because I'm probably going to have a, a long list of people that are trying to rent it. So probably won't be able to give it away too often for free if I'm low on cash. We'll see how things go. Yeah, what I'm going to try to do is make that guest house as nice as possible. And then maybe soup it up with some sort of way to play Entropia in the room. So that'd be cool. So yeah, and the other advantage that I have where I'm building the pool house, I'm on the last stop on the public transit to Toronto. So you can literally just hop on a train for a few bucks, go back and forth to Toronto. So Toronto, like if, I don't know if anyone's checked out the, the hotel prices in Toronto, most of them are over $200 a night. And yeah, so if I can beat that price just to have a little bit of a train ride to get there. Ah, oh, fuck, another welding wire print. You gotta be kidding me. Yeah, so that's what I'm gonna try to do. Offer a place to stay to my friends for helping out the show. Maybe one day, once the whole world situation resolved, we can have like this big Entropian party. Have a whole bunch of people that play Entropia come by. Because I don't know, traveling to Canada probably is a little bit expensive on the planes, but really the, the main kicker is finding a place you can stay for cheap. So I'll try to help people out with that. If you want to see what Canada's like and come check it out, 
once the whole world situation is better, or even if you're in different parts of the country. I know I've some viewers message me from out west and out in the BC area, so maybe some people would want to do that too. I know it's pretty ambitious goals, especially with the way my health is going. It almost seems like it could be in the grave any day now, but I don't know. I'm gonna try to be more optimistic about it and fucking try to be positive. Who knows? Like a lot of people will get bad health problems, like digestive tract wise, and drag it on for years, maybe even decades. So hey, I shouldn't be that pissed or depressed about it. Yeah, if anyone else is having bad health issues, just never forget, right? The power of belief. If you can believe that you're going to recover, sometimes it goes a long way. <laughs> Not that that's like medical advice I'm offering. This is just my opinion. <laughs> now, I highly recommend going both routes, like believing that you're going to get better and going for the traditional medicines with doctors. <laughs> I wouldn't just pick one or the other. <laughs> Now, it's kind of like when you're wanting to make revenue streams in life. One of my favorite YouTubers, uh, Vegetable Police, he changed his name to something else, but it's one of those names you can't say on YouTube, so I kind of wish he didn't change his name to that. So I'll just keep calling him the Vegetable Police. He can even put it into YouTube and it'll still find his channel. But no, he was bragging, or not bragging, offering advice about how he went, same situation as me, bad health problems, stuck in his mom's basement, couldn't get anything accomplished in life. And he started diversifying his income sources, like getting a YouTube channel that had some income, selling t-shirts on Society6 or whatever website you want to use. Got the link below for that. So yeah, he started getting revenue from that. And then he started doing t-shirt sales. And then he started having re revenue from that. Then he started doing his fitness books and how he used monkey strength to to get himself back into shape and or get himself into amazing shape fuck he's doing like one-handed push-ups now he's trying to do the one-handed chin-up bar press but it's not working <laughs> he's been trying that one for years and <laughs> yeah so that's pretty much what you got to do in life and that's what i'm trying to do too these days is diversify how many sources of income i got so i'm not just depending on my life savings dwindling away i am still getting the occasional work shift at my old job but even my boss has like kind of admitted it to me. It's like I'm not really the greatest for working in a lot of situations because I got so many health problems now, but he tries to get me shifts whenever he can for jobs that I can do. Like the, the whole no memory issue is very serious when it comes to a lot of jobs. The government insurance agency was telling me there's nothing to worry about. Just go back to your job, even though you can't remember stuff. And then I was like, but what happens when I forget to like look if cars are crossing or when I have to cross the street and I forget to look like that's kind of dangerous isn't it and they're like oh don't worry <laughs> I'm like you bastards I can't believe they say shit like that to people oh yeah and the one time I was having like severe chest pains to the point where I was collapsing thinking of calling an ambulance because I was doing the rehab for the concussion it wasn't going well it was actually making it worse and you know what they said to me from the government insurance oh you're fine I'm like, don't you want to actually run some tests to actually see that I don't have heart issues and stuff? And they're like, no, we don't care about tests. Our job is to say you're fine and to stop paying you money. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, you sons of... <laughs> now, it was a really nice lady that they had telling me that kind of stuff. And in a way, I didn't hold it against her either because it is her job to do that. And in a way, it's also the belief factor. She is actually helping you in a way, telling you there's nothing wrong with you without even doing tests because she might actually convince you that you're better and then you being convinced that you're better might actually help you in the long run. It's kind of like being surrounded by yes men. <laughs> it can be good and it can be bad. Yeah. yeah, so that's what I'm hoping. Keep to diversifying all my income sources. If anyone can help, we got that uh, Bitcoin lottery. The swag bucks purchases. Oh yeah, that's what I was gonna do. Thanks for reminding me, me. <laughs> oh shit. Let me just bring up the fire source. I'm gonna reopen Google and I can't take any chances. You know me and the boobs. <laughs> Alright, so we're back. Let's see. Okay. I was thinking I was going to do something about Entropia Partners. No. God, that's a short-term memory issue. Fucking things 10 seconds ago. I can't even remember what I was doing. Right. I was trying to show ways to diversify your income. 
see if I can open it and find it. Oh yeah, I remembered as I was doing it. So what happened is yesterday I did a purchase from Alibaba using swag bucks. So I figured I would show you guys the process of how much cash back I get and how much work it is to get that cash back. Because I know a lot of people are like, hey, this guy's probably full of shit. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, I ordered from AliExpress. Where is it? Alright, here it is. It says, you have cash back pending. What happens is you get an email. I won't show you guys all my emails, but I'll just open the email. Right, I hope there's not too much confidential information when I'm doing this. If there is, please don't hack me. <laughs> now I signed up to the Atari Age message board form to see if uh, to see uh, some of the comments people are reading or writing about my videos. So when I signed up to that, I'm like, hey, I'm gonna test giving my password to Atari Age and see if they hack it and use it on any other sites. So I used one of my common passwords for what was it, Instagram or something or Reddit. And then what do you know, right after I signed up for Atari age, my fucking Reddit got hacked. Someone used the password. So I was like, I'm not going to blame Atari age for that, but man, just be careful what passwords you use on different sites. I couldn't believe how fast it got hacked after using it. It was like only like a couple days. I was like, geez, you guys didn't really wait long to hack me. Right? So anyways, this is what happens. You'll get an email from Swagbucks. It'll be saying, congratulations, you're getting cash back from your recent purchase. So what happened was, is I spent $6 on AliExpress. They're giving me 12 Swagbucks. So now I have to do is click rate your purchase. So I click that and this is what you'll have to do. I'll just move myself so you guys can see better. So it says, how ha happy are you with the experience? I'll put an eight. Why did you give that rating? It was good price and fast shipping. I noticed with these, you can even give one word answers, but I like to help the marketing crew out because they have a really cool service here. Like two or three percent cash back is sick. Like it's hard to even get that on your credit cards with like a, a yearly expense fee. Like, oh, if you pay eighty dollars, you can get two percent cash back. And here Swagbucks is offering you even more cash back. And it doesn't cost anything. Alright, did you get a deal on your purchase? I'll put yes. What coupon code did you use? I think uh, I think it was a four dollar off. Or no, two dollar off, I think. And what did I buy? It was some electronics. I think it was LED wire strips. I hope my nephew isn't watching this episode because that's his birthday gift. <laughs> when he sees the price, he'd be like, holy fuck, you're cheap. <laughs> what was the brand of the item you purchased? That's a hard one. I think China brand, something like that. Complete the following sentence. I bought this item because it was good price and I needed a birthday gift. Day. Who did you make this purchase for? Um, family member. All right, so then you click submit. Boom, now it's 100% complete. And they, they actually counted as a survey. So that's why you're getting paid. You completed a survey for them. No market research, I don't know if anyone's done telemarketing jobs before, but they're willing to pay entire offices filled with telemarketers just so they can get this information about what you purchase. So that's why this Swagbucks is able to pay out so much. Market research data is actually worth a lot. Hey, they're advertising me some cannabis. I better not show that. Now, I've had that issue with Facebook. When I repost official government ads for cannabis, it got me banned in Facebook jail. It was like, it's not even illegal. And then I did one of those uh, 
what is it called the the questioning or the the decision to try to find out if they would reverse it and they wouldn't so then I went to high times page and I asked them hey guys are you ever having issues with Facebook doing that and they're like yeah they do too so it's not like they were just picking on me all right so guys if yeah if you want to help out with that I'll try to in the long run keep posting pictures about how my pool house is going it's not the super fanciest place to, to stay, but I live right next to that train station that goes to Toronto. It's in within walking distance from the room. So if I get that pool house done and you want to do some traveling and exploring all over Ontario, Toronto, Niagara Falls, staying at my place is actually a pretty good way to do it. Now and I'll make sure to get the, some user comments, maybe post on Google or something, or maybe Travel Plus, so people can see like, what the experience was like. Most of my family and roommates are pretty nice. Like even my mom used to be a big time partier back in the 70s, so she's not really that strict with a lot of stuff. My uncle, he's pretty cool. He's uh, got Down syndrome so bad, he really can't communicate with anyone. And he often just mumbles, so it's hard to understand what he's saying. And he used to have a real affliction for the girls. Like anytime he would see ladies or hot girls, he would always be asking them for hugs. <laughs> But he's been in such rough shape lately, he's pretty much bedridden now, so won't have to worry about any unsolicited hugs. <laughs> now I feel bad for the guy. I was going through my photo albums and I was like, shit, just a year ago, he was like in the backyard, running around, throwing stuff. Ugh, so depressing, but... <laughs> hey, no one lives forever, right? No, he's actually getting pretty old for someone with Down Syndrome, so... He had a good life. <clears throat> now, some girls that were at my uncle's school and like teachers and stuff, they would freak out when he would try to hug them. But he's not like really groping anyone or anything. He just really likes hugging people. So some ladies were actually nice about it and hugged him every day. <laughs> it was funny too. It's like sometimes we'd bring him to the hospital. He'd be in such rough shape. He could barely move. As soon as a hot nurse came around the corner, he's like, I can get up, I swear I can. <laughs> he's like trying to get up and show that he's feeling better. <laughs> it's like, that's all you need is a good cheerleader in life, right? <laughs> Sorry guys, I just had to close the window there. My fucking room is turning into a goddamn sauna. I think some of the humidity is coming in from outside. That's the one thing that you'll have to be prepared if you come to stay at my place, at the guest house, pool house. Maybe I'll be able to get air conditioning hooked up, but that's probably going to be a big if. And it's fucking hot where I live. Like, people come from the Sahara Desert and they're like, Dear God, I'm going back to the desert. This goddamn province is way too hot. <laughs> and it's not like the actual temperature hot. It's like our, our temperature hot gets around 40, 42-ish. So, yeah, that is fucking really hot compared to the West Coast. But we get this humidity factor on top of it and it adds like an extra 10 degrees so it almost feels like you're like 50 sometimes like mid 50s temperature I don't know like that's reaching the point where you sweat buckets just by sitting and not moving <laughs> so it's it's kind of really disgusting I notice when women come here from other countries and they're, they're not prepared for the humidity like if normally if you're if you have really long hair and it starts to get damaged Sometimes it can go poofy on you. Well, the fucking humidity and poofiness is like to the extreme here. So if you have damaged hair and you come here, be prepared to battle a fucking huge frizz balls of fucking giant fucking hair problems from humidity. <laughs> no, but the other good things about here is we really don't have that much in the way of deadly parasites other than Lyme disease, but my area doesn't really have many ticks with Lyme disease. I think I've only seen a tick once or twice in my whole life. So I've been fortunate with that. And you don't really have to travel far up north to just be infested with ticks. So I'm kind of in the area that's like a good zone away from ticks. We don't have a hookworm here. Can't believe that hookworm is so popular in tropical destinations. I never even knew about that. We actually had a, a couple that was from my city who went to was a vacation in Barbados or something. They just walked on the beach in bare feet for like 10 minutes and both of them contracted hookworm. 
and people don't know what hookworm is. It's this goddamn parasite that's in any water that happened to be contaminated by the, the, the parasite. And it's extremely common. It's almost like in every puddle you step in. Some people's immune systems are enough to battle it off, but occasionally you'll step in a puddle that has a lot of hookworms in it, and when you get infected with it, they start fucking eating your brain. Like, they get into your brain and start eating it to the point where you get headaches all the time, migraines all the time, and your IQ even starts dropping. And they showed kids that have, like, a whole bunch of hookworm. They get to the borderline, like, mentally handicapped five-year-olds. That's how bad it can affect your brain. And the reason you probably never heard about hookworm is there's no vaccine for it and no treatments. So these travel companies aren't going to tell you, hey, when you come to the tropics, you're running a huge risk of catching hookworm. And they said there's actually over a billion cases on the planet confirmed of hookworm right now. So can you imagine how many are unconfirmed? <laughs> they said the worst place that got affected by hookworm was the southern states. Like, uh, you know, in the south, they used to call the slow southerners. Well, they found out that's what it was. They were actually were slow because the fucking hookworms were doing it to them. Yeah, so that's what I was wondering in our society. Often we try to pretend like everything's so safe. But man, is it ever actually way dangerous than what the, the, the governments actually release? Yeah, so anyone who's like been to tropical locations and is having issues with like health problems and you did the Twinrex vaccines and you're wondering why it didn't work, is because these hookworms, there's no vaccine that's going to protect you from it. I don't know, maybe they found some ways to reduce the amount of hook for, hookworms that are infecting you. I hope. Because God, that sounds awful to get it. Yeah, so luckily, like the beach... Or not the beach, the, the pool and everything I have. You won't be at risk of any hookworm here. We get winter, so it kills off all the dangerous parasites. And they don't have time to rebound during the summer. So that's the one thing with Canada that's nice. It's like, despite having winter like nine months of the year, at least we have less deadly parasites. Now, and that was the funny thing my aunt was talking about. She's like, oh... I got a Twinrex vaccine so I can go to other countries and be 100% safe on the beaches. I'm like, no, that is not true. That's where I'm kind of like a little bit against these health matters that try to convince people that they're invincible. It's like, oh, I can get an injection, now I'm invincible. It's like, no, you're lucky if that injection even helps you 10%. <laughs> it's like how many people are going to fucking get a polio vaccine and then start drinking sewage? So I'm pretty sure if you're drinking sewage, no matter how many fucking polio vaccines you get, it's only going to help prevent it a little. You can still get it. <laughs> yeah, be that a warning. Don't drink sewage. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, so I've got a whole bunch of projects on the go today. I'm going to go outside and start trying to mow the lawn. See how I feel after that. If I'm having a lot of bad breathing issues and blood coming out of everything, then I'll probably take it easy again. But I'm pretty sure it's taking it easy too much that's causing this. I'm actually hoping it's just a virus, and once the virus is gone, then I'll be back to normal. But I'm really skeptical that's the case. Hell, but I'm going to try to be optimistic, right? Believe that you're going to be better. Believe, believe. <laughs> yeah, and don't anyone worry too much. I'm not telling everyone to look for sympathy points. I'm just sort of like I notice a lot of people online are going through health issues, and they have issues talking about it with people. So, yeah, I encourage everyone to talk about what you're going through. It can help you in the long run. Alright, so let's fin we'll finish up the show for today. Yeah, tomorrow's episode on Cyrene. Shit, I don't know if I'm going to keep trying to do the bonding liquid. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Is I'll, while you guys are gone, I'm going to collect enough sweat, maybe a whole day's worth of sweating, so I can finish off the last of the bonding liquid. And even if I can't get enough sweat to do that for manual sweating, I'll just go and help someone out by buying their sweat. And... Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll buy the sweat from one of my viewers. That one guy kept saying hi to me every day, saying thanks for doing the show. So, hey, buddy, if you got any sweat, you can hook me up for a deal for doing that bonding liquid. Just give me a shout. I'll probably see you in the, the, in the game tomorrow. And, uh, <coughs> yeah, if you want to help out with the links below, I got that fucking Bitcoin lottery. Pretty sure I showed you a roll for that today. Or did I? Oh, shit. Whew. Almost brought the boobs on, right at the last second. Now let's do one last spin for the the free Bitcoin lottery, so I can show you guys a spin. Uh, I'll, 
bring it up on the screen. Yeah, so if anyone else likes this Bitcoin lottery that they see me playing, I've got the link below. And not only can you play the Bitcoin lottery yourself, but you can start sharing the referral link on your page, get other of your viewers into it. So what you do is you just have to pick the, this, this, what is that, the CAPTCHA thing or whatever, click roll. Boom! I got the, the two free lottery tickets, the reward points, and some Bitcoin. And then you can play this high-low game. I started losing every time. We'll see how it works this time. You lose again. So yeah, I'm probably not going to play this high-low lottery anymore because every time I've been playing it, it's just loss, 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 loss. Maybe some other people are getting good luck. Maybe post it in the chat, guys. It's probably just me. So yeah, I'm going to keep collecting those Bitcoins. Got the swag box that I showed you from before. Uh, what else was there? We oh, yeah, my Patreon, the Society6. And don't forget to pick up some shirts from Raven Jade's store. She has the best Entropia shirts in all of Entropia. And I got a notification from her shop that my order has shipped. So we're just waiting now for the shirt to arrive. When it does, I'll try to wear it for the show. The only thing I can't remember if I got in regular t-shirt or tank top. If it's regular t-shirt, I might have to wait to the fall before I can start wearing it. As you can tell, I'm already fucking sweating buckets as it is. <laughs> Alright, and what else was there? The Entropia Partners? Yeah, for shit's sakes, guys. If you want some money for Entropia and you're tired of depositing real money, for God's sake, start doing Entropia Partners. It's legit. And yeah, if you sign up through my referral link, it'll help my show out. I really appreciate it. Alright, so there's probably, oh yeah, the Sex Machine. If any guys want to get into that... I recommend fucking if you want to get into it <laughs> sorry mind in the gutter no yeah if you want to do that help support it it's a Kickstarter thing I got the link below I think they've pushed back the release date for the actual hardware but the software version of it is launching in, in August so it's coming up soon according to their website and I'm assuming things will change and ladies sorry yeah the sex machine doesn't work for ladies but hey you can just call me <laughs> no I'm just kidding Right, so yeah, actually that actually happened. Uh, it was just today. Some girl was like, "Hey," she posted something about like wanting to get in to know each other better, and she was like the smoking hot avatar. But I'm pretty sure it was just one of those spam things from another country. So don't worry, ladies. I, I my time isn't all taken yet. <laughs> right, so yeah, I believe that's everything. All the links below the T-shirts. Oh yeah, and then I've got my shirts. Finishing quick is my specialty. And I'm also the king of contradictions, so I'll get that on there soon too. Alright, see you guys, and take care. Oh yeah, make sure, make sure, this is the most important thing. Never, ever purchase the products from my sponsor. It will ruin your life. <laughs> Bye for now. See you tomorrow. God willing. And yeah, try to take care of your health, guys. It's the most important thing subscribe button and I'll add a new video playlist. Not sure which one yet. <laughs>